Hello. How's it going? <clears throat> Sorry, I haven't talked much today. How are you? How are you? How are you? Um, I'm doing really good. Except it told me I didn't have internet for a second there. And I was like, hmm, that's interesting. But I'm on the internet. <laughs> Hi, Rachel. How's it going? Oh, brother. So, <clears throat> lucky for me, all I did was restart my Streamlabs. <clears throat> Excuse me. But it does mean my cameras may be now having to be configured. I just didn't want to be late. So let's just check them out. I want to make sure not things like the autofocus isn't on because that can be really annoying for all of us. So let's see here. I feel like it can, I don't think I'm going to brighten it up anymore. Um, and let's check the, thanks Terry. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hi Malin, hi Vicki, hi Beverly. I am on the internet, exactly. Isn't that funny? It's like, you don't have internet. It, it's my streaming encoder. They said that. So I recorded a video live yesterday and I just put my, or not live, I recorded a video last night and so I just turned, like I didn't turn my computer off because I wanted to make sure the video fully got into the cloud because that one time that didn't happen. Hi, Eliza. How's it going? Happy Saturday, everybody. <clears throat> and hello Twitch. It looks like Twitch is working today, which is great. I don't know what happened last time, but that was kind of weird. Um, let me check the iron for a second. I can still hear you. Okay, it looks good. Okay, cool. I mean, you know, I already have to deal with a sewing machine. <clears throat> I already have to deal with how to learn how to sew something. What's all this other stuff? Hi Terry, how's it going? Two Terry's in the chat and they're spelled the same. Welcome, welcome. How's it going? So are you guys sewing today? So I am making the Archer button up. I'm actually wearing my Archer. You guys know this Archer really well. I know. I wear it a lot, actually. <clears throat> and it actually fits really great. I have it over a shirt today. Um, and I'm going to um, be sewing the one we kind of fiddled with all week this week. So I wanted this to be a little bit more tailored, get rid of all the bagginess in the lower back region that I have. And I, I really monkeyed around with it, right? So um, I even made a couple muslins. So now we are to the stage where I'm going to actually sew the shirt I designed. So the shirt I'm going to be making isn't going to stay as fitted as that one. Hi, Daphne. How's it going? So, um, so once I did that, I did that kind of fitted version. Now I have my fitted archer block that I can use in the future. And then I created a different pattern from that that has the style lines that I'm looking for, which are right here. So it's got hand pockets on the front. Cause I'm kind of going for just like, like I say, like this casual overshirt to wear around the house. Um, I'll wear it everywhere. Let's be honest. You're going to see me wearing it all the time. I think, <laughs> um, I, the, here's my princess seams that I added to the back. There's no back vent. Um, or back pleat and then I added the side vents here. Um, it's going to be fully reversible, I think. Ooh, nice, Mullen. Nice. That's going to be so nice. I mean, there's still a lot of winter left. So, you know, it's great. You know what? For once, it looks like Twitch is behind YouTube. That's really weird. Usually, Twitch is almost instant. It's crazy. Okay. So everything looks okay here. Um, I've got all my stuff here. Let's see. So what did, I stacked everything up before we signed off. And I have my, um, let's see. I haven't even looked at this since we talked. I'm looking for my, okay, there's my pocket right there. So I'm going to do all my pockets. So I'm going to sew um, the lining. And then I'm going to sew the outer or vice versa. And then I'm going to put them all together. And then it's going to hopefully be reversible. Um, and I, I really, we really thought about that through because I, it's really just the challenge of doing it. I don't really need a reversible garment. And honestly, every time I see reversible garments, I always think, but really, do we really need a reversible garment? So it's kind of funny. I'm not really like a, like, um, I'm never really one to like harsh on anyone's like ideas at all. But at the same time, I'm always like, will I really ever turn that inside out? You know, so. <laughs> well, we'll see, Terry. <laughs> really, Malin? Oh, no. See, for us, Malin, what'll happen, not really in this region, but, well, that, I shouldn't say that. I'm no expert on the agriculture in this region because I've only lived here a few years. 
but the thing would be like all the cherry trees will blossom and then we'll get a freeze and then then all the cherries will be delayed and that's so sad you know that's the, always the worst and you know citrus is big in my re region i've told you almonds um olives um walnuts walnuts are the money that's where the money's at walnuts um what else? A lot of stone fruits like cherries and peaches and things like that. So, but olives and almonds and walnuts are king here or queen. So, ooh, a corduroy thayer jacket. Are you doing that so long, Eliza? You're gonna quilt the sleeve like, oh, cool, cool. <laughs> you lost your cherries, lost your seed. I know that happened to us too. Uh, that's so sad. Cherries are like the one thing. Oh man, they're just so good, you know? Okay, so this is the lining. I mean, uh, technically it could be the outer. It's a floral, it's kind of a navy royal blue floral. I'm in uh, Chico, California. So most likely most folks have produce from our region all over the world. In fact, when I was in Iceland, I actually saw produce from California there. That's why it's so expensive. <laughs> I was like, wow, I pay so much less for this exact brand of raspberry. <laughs> it was kind of weird. <laughs> okay, um, so here's my little patch pocket. So I'm doing, so this is the outer, and I'm doing these little hand pockets, <clears throat> and it's got this little peekaboo spot, so you're going to be able to see a little bit behind it. And I'm actually going to have this lining fabric as the peekaboo part. The inside version, so if I were to turn this inside out, um, it's going to have a chest pocket, and that's what this is right here. So I'm going to iron this right off the bat and get it ready. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome, Eliza. Yeah, that so long is really good. It actually tempted me because I actually like the Thayer jacket. I kind of like the, um, the, the silhouette of it, you know? All right, so I'm just going to fold down. So if anyone's following along to sew the... Um, archer as a regular archer i'm gonna still be doing a lot of the exact same steps but it's gonna look a lot more complicated because of the added things i'm doing i have sewn the archer two other times at least on camera and you can look those up or just go to the website so so dot live and they're all linked in the the product project i mean it's just a nice way to find the links to all the videos in order because youtube's so Kind of a pain. All right, so let's see here. I'm gonna just iron these down. This has a pretty wide hem. This pocket, uh, I widened it by a half inch from the original pattern. That's the only thing I did to this pocket. I find the proportions of this pocket to be a little narrow. So I just, did I just clip? Did I just clip those? Oh my gosh. I didn't need clipping on there. I needed it on this one. This one doesn't have the markings. Isn't that funny? I just double marked one. I carumba. All right, so we have this one, we have this one. Okay, so I'm just gonna iron this down. I'm not looking at chat right now, so sorry guys, just a second. This is such a quick little thing to iron. Let's see if I've got them symmetrical now, because I'm kind of notorious for not getting them symmetrical. Well, that's not too bad. This I can compensate for, but the hem, I, I really like to make sure is the same side to side. All right. I know that Sienna turned out great. <laughs> right Eliza I know it's like um those are so tempting when that happens I totally know what you mean all right so this is my fronts and let's see I do have a chest start did I not mark my chest pockets you guys what the heck don't you remember me doing that dang it all right, so let's see. I've got my um, dart here. We're gonna do that first. I forgot, I added a dart to the um, side seam because once I really worked on, okay, you guys, I'm really failing with my markings this time. 
You guys saw me cut this out. You saw me mark the heck out of it. Yeah, but yours came out great, Melin. This was the problem sometimes when you go too fast in the cutting, right? Because remember, I, I had the benefit of having manila pattern pieces like the cardstock, so I could just trace around it. Oh, 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 Beverly. I think you're right. No, 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 that's what I did right there. Thank you. See, I knew I had done something. All right, so let's sew the dart first here. Because the pocket goes right on top of the dart. So when I fitted my sleeve in my armhole, it kind of created um, something akin to a full bust adjustment. So I ended up adding a dart to the armhole. I don't back tack my darts, just in case you're new here. I always hand tie them. And it, this is kind of funny because I feel like as a sewist, I'm, I do kind of play fast and hard with the rules. I'm not really, um, there's just things that work for me and things that don't. And um, this is, I feel like this is kind of out of character that I actually stop and hand tie my darts like a, a good sewist, you know? So, but I do find that to be great. So it doesn't create that bulk right at the end. That could be kind of unseemly, you know? You gotta do what works for you. I'm so excited we're finally sewing together, you know? This is the easy part. <laughs> I know I made it really hard, but um, <laughs> it's nice to do this part. Yeah, Malin, right? Yeah, hey Megan, how's it going? I know, exactly, Malin. I feel like that's why I say I don't really have a sewing resolution this year. I don't ever have a sewing resolution. I don't ever have a resolution. Um, but I do, I'm gonna go to the iron. Um, I do think like looking back at how much we sewed last year, cause we made a lot. We made over 50 things on camera, you know? And I think that was great, but it's not for me about quantity. I think I'd really like to, um, what the heck? Did I make my dart fold up? Okay, that's what it is. I did make my dart fold up. That's funny. I usually make it fold down, uh, but I think when I was talking to you, I was talking about how, oh, and sometimes the dart will fold up for um, curvier patterns, and then I think I did that. That's really funny. I'm such a weirdo today. All right, so I'm gonna look at my... I want to mark my chest pockets, but I marked it on the back side. So you need to mark your dart on the wrong side of the fabric, but your chest pockets are things like that on the right side. And I kind of knew that doing it, but it didn't stop me. I was getting pretty hungry for lunch then, I recall. So it's this one, there's one. And here's the other. Okay. All right. Right, Terry? I know. No one is hitting that like button. <laughs> That's so funny. I was playing with friends the other day and um, like for anyone new here, I play video games. It's just something I like to do. It's relaxing. It really takes my mind off things. <clears throat> and I um, was playing with some folks and they, there was someone in the game with um, a name that we could tell they were a, a YouTube streamer because that's what a lot of gamers do. They put that in their title of their username. And my friend just automatically rolled off 
Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and follow the channel. <laughs> she just mimicked it so perfectly, it kind of cracked me up. So you just did the same thing, Megan. Sounds like you watch gaming streams. All right. I think likes are only helpful to other users. They're helpful for me, obviously, as far as like knowing people <clears throat> took a second, <clears throat> I'm really sorry, to like it. But um, I'll tell you, I don't think it changes the algorithm for YouTube and suggested videos at all. I kind of slightly looked into it once to see, because prob I'd probably push it more with you guys because, um, you know, finding other sewists is really important to us and it's kind of hard to get the word out. You know, there's a lot of great content already out there and this is kind of unique. But I did kind of look at that and, and it did seem like that doesn't really help push me up into suggestions or put me in front of more people. I value people liking videos like when I'm looking at them because then you can tell like, oh, a lot, a lot of people like this video. Maybe this is a good one to watch. You know, that helps. But then um, there is also the the added benefit for me, if I see people do that, then I'm like, oh, okay, well, this is the kind of content people are wanting and it helps me kind of decide what I'm gonna do. Like if I look at my top viewed videos, which I never do, and I did at the end of the year, I was actually really surprised what they were. You know, it was like, I'm pretty sure it was ginger jeans for sure, because I've made those a bunch, jeans in general, you know. Um, the Audrey jean jacket, oddly, because I don't meet anyone who makes it, but I have a lot of people watch that video. And um, the um, closet case patterns, pajama top, or I can't remember. I think it's the top. Maybe it's the bottoms. So, you know, it's kind of interesting. And some of those videos aren't, like one of them, I don't even think it's from last year. So. <clears throat> It stained your fabric, Terry? Oh. Oh, don't worry about being behind, Eliza. You're not behind ever. Um, I do use a Choco liner, Terry. I, I have to admit, I did notice the yellow chalk on something that I've had for a really long time, and I think you're right. I think it does have a tendency to do that sometimes. So, do I seem fuzzy today? It looks clear for me. Is it fuzzy for you guys? Let's see. I might because I had to restart the stream. No, I don't. Sorry. I don't want to sharpen it too much. You'll see um, what I really look like. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, really, Terry? That's so interesting. I wonder why. Oh. <laughs> Eliza. <laughs> Not fuzzy. Okay, it looks good. Okay. Okay, cool. That's awesome, Malin. Yeah, I, um, I'm trying to get better about liking videos myself and disliking them because there's a lot of really misleading titled videos out there and I get really upset someone wasted my time like that. So to get back to your question about what to use for marking, uh, we were just talking about this because I actually am going to look up what I found. I want to find out more about it before I kind of sell you on it because I I'm, it seems too good to be true but I do use a chalk aligner for the most part and I don't have any other backups my face is a little fuzzy but not sewing okay good that's fine I don't mind my face being fuzzy. <laughs> that's funny because I was working so hard on it last night getting it right for the video I'm super red lately and I'm not as red in real life as I am on the camera, but I'm definitely, it picks all of it up. Yeah, just chocolate. I used to really like the Taylor's chalk, but sometimes it's hard to get a hold of, but I really like it when it's nice and sharp, you know? And then the kind of stuff that's a little like crayon, but all those things, I do feel like there aren't, there aren't temporary, you know? Nancy, um, who's a, a regular viewer here, Terry, would tell you she uses washable Crayola marker for everything and it works great. 
I think that's a I think that's a great suggestion because that's really easy to find. You can find that at a drugstore, you know, like a CVS or a Walgreens or a Rite Aid or those kinds of places. I could have probably stood to iron this part, right? I'm taking my sweet time doing it, aren't I? So um, my archer, it, like I said, it's not going to be sewn in a traditional way. It's not going to have the placket the way the pattern is. It will have the collar and the collar stand and the, and, ooh, I was about to say the yoke, but I'm actually not sure it's going to have the yoke that way. So I'm really sorry if you're looking for a straight up archer um, how to. I have those, this one's not it. This one's more like a troubleshooting as I go, how to sew this a reversible. This triangle's definitely bigger than the triangles over there. <laughs> the iron is a good way to mark things too if, you, if, if it's like appropriate. Just creasing it. The um, one of the old school ways to do it before there were all these fancy gadgets and gizmos was you if you have glass headed pins like these are glass headed pins um, and you pin them through fabric like this and then you iron it it'll leave little holes. That was a tried and true way to mark things for forever. You guys remember that? Any of you? So all right. So I was, um, I, Spoonflower sent me this email yesterday <clears throat> and they have their petal. I'm going to get rid of this ink right here. This ink is going to cause me problems later. It could cause me problems later. So let's get rid of some of it. That was sloppy, very sloppy of me to leave Sharpie there. And it's a really easy way to make my nice hand sewn garment end up being a little junky because if that line shows through to the other side or something happens in the laundry, I'd be pretty unhappy. So, that on me. But they sent me an email of basically saying, hey, have you noticed that petal signature cotton is on sale right now for 15% off and they are marketing it towards garment sewists. And I hadn't noticed it was on sale, but I also hadn't used it and it's not on my radar or on my mind. And so I ended up buying a yard and maybe I'll make like a, like a, a Wixton tank or something. Wixton tank, what's that, what's that called? What's that called? Yeah. Ah, oh, you're welcome, Lisa. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, thanks, Terry. I doubt they're very symmetrical, but yeah. Pressing under would have been a little better. Taylor's tax. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard of Taylor's tax exactly. Um. Anyway, I ordered the yard, and then I was kind of poking. Around. They had like something at the top of their a bar at the top of the website, and it had a. See here, look at all this ink. Um, they had a. Um, it was like their, their current things they're trying to call attention to. And one of them is that they have grants. Like they're, they're like basically store credit and fabric. And so I applied for one and I'm super proud of myself that I just took the time and just did it. And it was a lot of work to put everything together. But I need to do more things like that, you know? I feel like when we get more things like that, it makes me more flexible in things I can make for you because then I'm not constantly like, do I need that garment or do I have a reason to make that garment? Because if I'm spending the money on the fabric, it's gotta be something that isn't just gonna sit there. You know, I'm kinda, I'm, I'm really practical and I'm sorry, almost to a fault. All right, let's get rid of some of this ink. Oof, next time when you guys Tell me, um, you're not gonna like all that ink, Sarami. You know why I left it is because I was thinking flat felled seams, it'll be fine. And we're not doing flat felled seams. We're doing, we're lining it. But I actually thought a lot about what Megan was saying about the um, size of the jacket once I have all these layers and I got a little bit um, nervous. 
<laughs> she properly did her job well. <laughs> Thanks, Megan. And so I, um, I think I will be kind of shy on the seam allowances for sure, like on the underarm. Here, I don't have much of a choice. All right, so these are my back darts, or I mean uh, princess lines that I added. What seam allowance did I do down here? I, I trimmed it off, right? Yeah. I'll just trim off this uh, ink in a second. So I got rid of a lot of fabric in the small of the back on this, and I ended up go going with a princess line rather than a dart. There was a lot of fabric. It's just one of the things that every, all things like that fit me that way. So just my personal struggle, you know? And I think there's a lot of patterns out there that don't pay attention to the fit of the back also, and so it's a, it kind of ends up being a little more common than it should. You'll always see me commenting on someone's, we show the back, because <laughs> I really wanna see the back view, even on the pattern companies, and they're like, oh yeah, we'll put it in our stories. I'm like, thanks, that's what I want, on a back view, you know? <laughs> do you do all the adjusting on a dress form? I don't, Sydney. I did it on me. I don't have a dress form that's me. Willow, what did I say, Vicky? The Willow tank, what did I say? I knew what I said was wrong, but I don't remember now what I said. All right. Um, shall I top stitch my seam allowance? Why not, right? So I, um, Wix I said Wixen. Wixen's a dress, right? Wilson. <laughs> That's probably a typo, huh? I'm gonna just press my seam allowances towards the side. This is fully lined, so I don't need to finish the seam allowances. This will just be a way to make them lay nice and flat. Oops. And plus it's super satisfying to sew that fast, right? All right, so here's my yoke. So if I were doing this the other way, I would have the, um, if I was doing this the classic archer button up, no lining, I would have the other yoke um, right side to wrong side and I would sew them together like a sandwich. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna construct the lining and then the outer I'm gonna make the sleeves their own little beasts, and then I'm going to put it all together. So let's see. Now, the, here's my, like, this is what I'm gonna get into. You can see I actually have kind of a slight dart here, and that's why you see a little bit of curving. That's gonna be kind of the roundness of my back, I'm hoping, you know? So, oh yeah, that great module so long. That's really picking up. Tomcat Stitchery, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish I could get rid of this bottom. Maybe I could do this. Wait, can I do this? Oh, I can do that. Now I can see the Twitch chat a little better. Yay. You make one layer, two bottoms and three tops that all go together. So I was thinking about that and I was thinking, what if I looked at what was, you know, like what if I look at what I have in my wardrobe and do that? And I think a lot of you said you're doing the same thing. So I was like, hmm. All right, so now this is where I'm thinking like, do I top stitch right now, right now, you know, through this yoke? Or do I wait until my top and bottom are together and do it? I think I'm gonna do them separately because I want this to be reversible and I want the stitching to look good on both sides. So I'm gonna push the seam allowance towards the yoke and stitch it down. Just like that. And so now I have my back. It's kind of a busy fabric, huh? Ah, oh, okay, Melon. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. 
All right, so now I have my fronts and my back. So we're gonna put the fronts to get to the shoulders. And so then when I put the sleeves on, my plan is to use flat felled seams because my opinion is that they are fairly reversible. I like the way they look from both sides as opposed to like a French seam, you know, not, but I wouldn't use a French seam anyway in this context for a reversible thing. More so I'm thinking about how to make my sleeves fully reversible since they have a placket. It is Beverly. It's subtle. You know, it, it's a quilting cotton, but doesn't the print look like it would be a garment? Bye, Terry. Oh, cool. We'll probably make those again. We're making the saffron jeans by Dear Doe soon. That'll be another jeans so long. Thanks for coming. <laughs> yeah, Terry, that's how I feel too. Hello, Ray. Oh, it was Melinda saying goodbye to uh, someone else. <laughs> How's it going, Ray? So I'm gonna press my shoulder seams on the front towards the yoke. So same thing, I'm just trying to get this as flat as possible. Let me go. And now I'm gonna set this aside for now but I'll probably sew the side seams together and I'm gonna set the sleeve in with the flat belt seam. All right, so now my next little bundle is right here. So let's put this little peekaboo pocket on. Oh, let's do the, the um, dart first. All right, so let's look also, I cannot tell the difference between either side of this fabric I feel like one side's a little fuzzier and that's kind of how I treated it for my husband. But even that's pretty hard. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so let's put my dart in. Just like this. Oh, I lost a pen. I heard it. It's so funny that I made this dart go up. <laughs> if I were really clever, I would have made a dart pattern that goes up and a dart that pattern that goes down so that my uh, bulk between the outer and the lining <laughs> was as less as possible. You know? Someone get this girl some new scissors. I, I have about at least 12 pairs of little scissors around here. I can't bear to get rid of them, you know, but they're, none of them are really great anymore. Okay. Don't lose that. How are you doing today, Ray? <sighs> yeah, I think so too, Beverly. I also think, um, I was thinking also doing it in terms of making, so this is my thing is like, do you know, you know how like one thing you're like, these two things would go really great together, but they don't because of maybe the proportions from one to the other, like one's high waisted um, and one's low waisted. So like if your shirt's like really high and your pants are really low, then they won't go together, you know? So I would really like like a little cheat sheet sitting in my closet of my garments and where they sit on me. But that just seemed like so much work, you know? So what if I just went through and cataloged, you know, the top 60% of what I wear? And I just did really quick and dirty pictures and so they could like hang on a hanger. I know this seems like so too thought out. But then I would know, okay, this goes with, you know, this shirt hits right here. Like a good example is my scout tee. I love 
how my scout tea turned out. Remember, that's the one I did the, it's white with a little delicate floral on it and like oranges and a mint green. And um, it had the lines woven into the fabric. So it was, it was see-through. The fabric was very sheer. And so I lined the lower half. I put a yoke in it. I lined the lower half. I put the curved hem. I put the cap sleeve. I like I actually redrafted the sleeve so it fit really good. I love that shirt, but I have to wear it with something pretty high waisted. I didn't realize how short realize how short that thing is. You know? And so um I would really like to know what goes with that shirt so I would wear it, get to wear it more. Ooh, going through your your whip pile. All right, so here's my facing for my pocket. There's the little notch, so I felt like I was really good about notching anything, but we can tell that wasn't the case. <clears throat> Oops, what am I doing? All right, so I put quarter inch seams on this. <clears throat> Like once we sewed that, um, <clears throat> was it the Thea Rochelle Raglan almost like, like almost a year ago to the day and she has these little peekaboo pockets. It just really reminded me how much I love these pockets. They can be a bit juvenile so you have to kind of be careful, you know. All right, I'm going to clip this curve because it's an interior curve. And so now overlocking this edge would be really great, but I'm not gonna do that. <clears throat> but I think I will put a little run, line, run a line of stitching here so that I have a little edge to turn under. It'll be easy. Like that. I'm gonna use the iron for part of that. So let me drink some water while I read some chat. I don't know why I'm, I can't, can't clear my throat. <clears throat> oh, I think I have the Sasha's. Grandma's. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm really glad I didn't see that while I had water in my mouth. I think I actually would have spit that out because that is exactly. I always wanted those Beverly, but they were just too expensive for my mom. <laughs> I was so jealous of those kids, you know? But you know, like as an adult and as a kid who really, uh, my choices of what I put together weren't really appreciated by my mom. My mom is really fun, you guys. Like I don't want you to get the wrong impression of her. But then I think she was just like, you know, I have to I have to wonder like being a single mom at a time when there weren't any other single moms you know this was the early 70s um, she probably wanted me to look perfectly presented and like I had um, there was nothing different about my home you know because you know when they have those like mother daughter days and then daddy daughter days and you know, like my mom would go on the daddy daughter days as my dad <laughs> And she, she, I can't believe she did that knowing her now, but I'm sure in some ways she wanted me to go to school looking like I had, you know, like as if matching your clothes made it look like you had better parenting at home, you know? And so she would kind of give me flack for the things I would put together, which is funny because I really wanted those granimals. <laughs> I just love the idea of it, you know? <laughs> I know, I walked, I'm not choking, Megan. We all remember that, <laughs> the choking of 2019, so... <laughs> All right, so I'm going to, I'm going to edge stitch this. I'm trying to decide if I want to edge stitch it or top stitch it. I think I'm going to top stitch this. So I'm going to iron these first and then I'm going to top stitch it. So, okay, there we go. I did a facing here too, so it would be less bulky. Like I could have lined the whole pocket, but um, I feel like this will cut down 
on the bulk of the pockets there, especially near my belly. Anything to cut down on the bulk near my belly or my chest, I'm down. All right, get hot iron. We'll just set you aside, we'll get you ready. All this ink is um, a little, ugh, yeah, I don't wanna talk about it. We're gonna hope for the best. I've never had problems with it, but you know, it's that one time. Making sure they matched the side seam there. <clears throat> All right, so now I'm gonna turn under this edge. No one will actually see that line of stitching either. So if I end up not uh, getting it perfect, that'll be okay. So I was trying to record a video last night of of the next pattern for chicken boots, which is the zip double. And I've been trying to record this thing all week. <laughs> That's how it always goes. I don't know why I can be here streaming and it's dead silent in this building the pretty much the entire time. Like we'll be sitting here for hours, you guys. And I can't manage to record these videos before I start streaming usually. It's usually in the afternoon. But it's dicey because the workers might come back anywhere between three and like 4.30, so I have to be careful. And that doesn't give me much time between streaming and doing that. And um, so I did yesterday. So at first I started and then um, they all came back and at two o'clock. So, you know, it's Friday, you know, maybe they kicked off early. And so then I was like, great. So now I ha then I had to wait as they all trickled in between like two and 4.30. <laughs> So then I started at five once it got quiet for a while. And then um, towards the end of my video, like 30 minutes in, <laughs> I heard people in the building and I heard them laughing. And then I heard really loud music. <laughs> it's like, like a party. It's like, oh, I just can't win. I have to re-record the video anyway because I want to add some things, but still it's like, holy man, the struggle. I don't have a soundproof space, you know? <laughs> I, well, I guess I could, but the thing is I have a camera on my face, you know? So I'd have to sync it perfectly, which you know how that would go. I'm gonna look at those Hudson pants, Megan. I'm, all, I'm gonna look at the, um, uh, I don't know, we're gonna see. I'll, I'm gonna look at those though. I could probably stand to have some new leggings. I've been using mine for a while. All right, so let's top stitch this down. I sort of want to top stitch this edge first, but I think that's a mistake. I'm gonna top stitch this edge first so I know I get my linings under there. I kind of like the idea for this jacket is starting to remind me in my head of like a uniform, um, a uniform jacket, like, like almost like a mechanic would wear in a way. I don't know. I don't know how to put it. One time I had a video and they all came in and the video was so good and they all came in and they were clocking out and laughing and I tried to get rid of the background noise because I really liked the rest of the video a lot. I liked the length of it. I liked how it all came together. Shoot. And um, all my monkeying around with the, the audio, like I looked up YouTube tutorials on how to do it. It just didn't sound right, you know? So I ended up re-recording it. It was literally one hour to do that rather than four hours of monkeying around with the audio, you know, because that's my skill level with that. 
I can edit the video a little bit like like I can do I mean you know like splice things in that's not actually hard that's really easy um, I don't want to spend hours doing that otherwise my videos would be really edited down right but I don't want to spend my time doing that it's just not not my priority so. but the voice the sound stuff like all those if you saw all the settings dang I wanted to pass out I have lots of other things I have to do, so it's like, oh, if that was the only thing I did, I would probably be down for that. <laughs> Why are you, oh, finish spinning the legs? They're joggers, not yoga pants. Right, right, right. Right, Megan? But you guys have kind of discouraged that a little bit. All right, so here's my other pocket. Now, I don't really actually have to finish this edge because it will be um, inside. So let's see here. I'm hoping I'm not forgetting anything, but if I just lay this here, just like this. Wait, why isn't that fit? Does it go like this? Uh, uh, what happened? That doesn't fit. Oh, my facing is just taller than my pocket. I don't like that. I'm changing that. Um, I think I'm going to add like, I'm going to add an inch and a half to this. Sorry, guys. Yeah, maybe, Malin. Maybe I'll try that. <clears throat> I might even be able to add that to the video, you know? I could probably do that. But then it's tw picking music. Like, I had a friend that was, like, not into the music I picked for my 2019 re review and patterns. And it's really hard to find copyright-free music um, that's the right length, you know? No, it'll, it'll be too short. See, this is what'll happen. If I put this here... Right? I'll be stitching the pocket down right through this stitching right here. It'll be stitched right here. Sorry. Sorry. It won't take me long to cut it out though. We'll just do it with the ironing board really quick. Because we have, oh, there's the other uh, blade. Oh, but that blade's actually better. Let's see. That's what this little chunk is right here for, right? is because of my face cam doing the voiceover is probably um, a little trickier just like cutting one more out and sewing it again I mean I know like for a lot of people they're just like oh I wouldn't want to have to do that but that's not really that's like the easy part for me you know like that that I can handle it's just kind of a pain and it's like 
It's like that whole thing is like, do I do it now? Are they coming back? I'll hear a car on the street and think they're all coming back. And I'm like, oh no, I can't come, I can't do it. And then, um, and then I've stopped when I should have just done it, you know? So, and I told it myself today, from now on, when you do these, you're going to cut three out because that's part of the issue for me is that I, I just think, oh, I'm just going to have to do it once. And it's never been the case, you know? So I, I should just cut three out. I will eventually use those three, even if I get the first video right. I will eventually use those because eventually I'll be promoting whatever it is, you know. All right, so I'm just going to stitch this down just like dish. I'm just going to do a quarter inch seam there. There's my pocket. Just like that. These fuzzies, I keep thinking they're like the ink, but they're not. They're actually the blue fibers of this flannel here. <laughs> I know, right, Sydney? I know, and it's and for me being here, I actually like when I hear them. It's kind of a it's kind of a comforting noise. Like they come in and um, they're, you know, laughing and whatever, clocking out, probably talking about something funny or the work they did that day. Mostly it's in Spanish and I actually find it a really soothing sound and it's kind of nice and it doesn't last that long and then they're gone, you know, so. Why is that hanging down a little bit? All right, so there's my pockets. Very cute. Stitch down my dart. Stitch down my dart. And then I will have the front are ready to go. I should have pressed the, uh, <laughs> I should have pressed the darts while I was over there, eh? <laughs> okay, so let's see here. I'm going to push that towards the inside. I gave this piece a couple of extra notches because of the, um, it was so symmetrical top and bottom, you know? So far this is going really good and I'm looking forward to getting to the fun parts of trying to figure out how to get it together. That's probably not going to happen until I get to the sleeve. fabric is so symmetric or so the same on both sides I'm a little worried I would be putting it backwards or something you know? it helps when you've sewn a muslin too to <clears throat> or you've sewn something a few times it makes it a lot faster doesn't it that's when you get to listen to an audio book and so <laughs> All right, I'm gonna stitch these down like I did on the lining. notches are in the wrong place because of um, 
Well, that's what it was. We I accidentally took off um, too much seam allowance on the center back to make them half inch seams, not three quarters. And so I left the three quarters on the other one. So it changed the width of my, the top of my center back. Yeah, me too, Carrie. I went down that with uh, the Moneta dress. I have so many of those. I really hope that petal signature cotton, what is that? Hmm. I saw it on this side, but I didn't see how bad it is on this side. I don't want to pull that out. I'm just going to trim the fiber down a little bit. There we go. It's a, like a little slubby in the weave. My hair will cover it. <laughs> oh no. All right. Right, this together. We got our shoulders. Oh, my shoulder's really different. I kind of remember this. Why was this? This was like I trimmed one up and then I hadn't trimmed the other and one was already off, right? That's what it was. I actually don't want to trim it at the shoulder. I don't want my shoulder to come in any further. So I'm going to trim it at the, the neck. The neck's dicey because then you're dealing with your neck circumference. So yeah, let's see if we can finesse this a little bit. Can you guys hear that siren? Oh, now I bet you can. I'm curious. You know, the other thing I could do with the sound is maybe use a different microphone, one like I'm wearing. I started streaming with one of those, but, um, damn it. <laughs> Just did the same exact thing. But, um, oh no, no, that's it. That's what I want. But it didn't seem consistent. Like it didn't really last. So I got a little nervous about it. This one's been great, you know. You could hear it, yeah, so I figured. All right, let's push that seam allowance towards the yoke as well. Like that. Okay, so now we are two, we have two shirts. I haven't dealt with the side seams yet and I do still have this vent that I wanna put in here. But um, I think I'll do that. <clears throat> Let's think about this. I think I'm going to sew the Side seams together, because I think when I flat fell this, I'm only going to do it on the armhole, you know? Yeah, right, Megan? I feel like, you know, it's not a studio, right? Like, not a, it's not a video studio or whatever you want to call it, so. <laughs> I don't have that luxury. I'm going to sew my side seams together. I think this is a pretty, you know, safe bet. I'm gonna go just to my vent, which is right about here. And I think when I get here, I'm gonna be trimming down the seam allowance so that I can sew around the perimeter in a continuous stitch around the um, hem. I'll also leave one side seam open on the, on, you know, I'm going to do it on the other one. Well, I may have to hand sew this lining shut on the, in the side seam rather than stitch it down. Cause normally what I would do is just stitch it closed, but I'm thinking because it's reversible, I can't do that. 
And I'm thinking hand sewing this fabric will be easier than that fabric, you know? Normally I would just do this in the, the underarm seam. That's true, Megan. Yeah, I've actually been thinking about moving my setup over there in the corner that I'm not using. It's a little closer in, it's got drop ceilings. It doesn't have a fantastic backdrop though, <clears throat> you know? But you're not here for the backdrop, right? Okay, so let's leave that. Let's try it on. <laughs> okay, the shawl's not helping. <laughs> there we go. There's my pockets, except I don't have them stitched down. This feels pretty good so far. I think the armhole could be a little bigger because of wearing it over something like the archer right now. Because the art, this archer is so much dropped. <laughs> Make another quilt, yeah, exactly. I still, I have, my quilt's finished now, I bound it. It's over there in the corner. Turned out great. I really love that I did the rainbow binding on the edge. Like I took all those strips and pieced them together. It just looks great, but it doesn't photograph well. You know, like you can't really see that. I hope my armhole's not too small now that I've really fitted it. Could be. Will this end up being a shirt I have to just wear as a shirt? You know? All right, so let's do the side seam here. Or that's what I was gonna do, huh? I was gonna make a narrower seam allowance. I'm gonna do that. Sorry. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take this out now. And I'm gonna do a really narrow seam allowance. Why did I have to figure this out on this fabric? This hard this one's the hard one to take out. Let's do this though. Okay, do a little bit at each end. I love that the light, it's staying light later. Like sometimes I really like it when it it's like dark at five because I feel like, okay, now, um, like the excuses to be out in the world are, are done now. I, it's okay to be home. <laughs> Quilts are not about pictures, exactly. Yeah, I'm thinking, I, I'm hoping if my, I'm gonna record my video again after the stream. If it goes well, I'm gonna allow myself some time to work on coming up with my next project. And I'm gonna do, I think I'm just gonna do like small little quilt type things just to try different techniques out. Just for something fun to do. But I do like, like, but before I was kind of using, like, it being dark. I'm like, oh, I need to go home now. Because um, I'm one of those people that will just keep working. And then my husband's like, um, what's your ETA? You know? And then I'm like, oh, my gosh, it's 6.15. I'm so sorry, you know? He's, like, waiting to start dinner. <laughs> and now I'm, like, getting confused again. Because I'm like, oh, it's still light. I love walking out to my car, you know? Oh, I did, Daphne. Thanks. It's one of those ones, I don't actually remember the pattern name. It's one of those like things where I'm at a show. Um, I, you know, here's the funny thing. When you go to shows, especially like a knitting show, you really wanna bring a project, right? But as a vendor, it's actually really hard to have time to knit. Um, mainly because all the time after the show closes is spent getting back to your room and finding food and, and getting to bed at a decent hour and then going through all the email and everything you missed during the day as a working person and for all the people who don't know you're at a show, right? They, they want you to carry on, right? <clears throat> and um, 
I get to a show usually. I stopped bringing a project. I would occasionally bring a project, and Brooke would give me kind of a hard time. She'd be like, um, you know, you didn't even bring anything to knit. I'm like, I, I didn't. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I had too many things to tag before the show, and I told myself, you need to do that. I would, most of the time, but I would bring my tools, and I would almost always cast something on. And so this is a show shawl. That's what I call these, because Brooke can knit, and she can knit really complicated stuff while she's working in her booth and talking to people. She's incredible. And I sit there and I'm usually facing her across the aisle or I'm next to her and I just watch her doing that all day and it makes me want to knit. <clears throat> and so this is one of her skeins of yarn that naturally progresses in color. So it's gradient. See, it doesn't, I don't change the colors there. And so we just found, I just found like a project really quick on Ravelry. Like, you know, if you're on Ravelry and you tend to look at projects, which I always did, or patterns, you amass a lot of like wish list, right? Patterns that you really want to knit. Um, and I'm also of the philosophy of like, you know what? I really like this yarn and I want one skein. And once it's done, it's going to be fine, you know? So... It is really simple. I, I could have bound off the edge a little looser, but it's a really simple pattern, you know, that I could do mindlessly at the show. And I do, I pretty much get one of these done between Madrona and Stitches West, you know? So really simple. And I love her gradient skeins. This is just one of her skeins, I'm pretty sure. It's like, they're so great, the colors, you know? So fun. Yeah, it's like satisfying and quick, exactly. And then I don't come home with the, from the show with a whole big project I've started because I've done that too. I'm mostly a sweater knitter and that's why. So, okay, so I'm gonna do quarter inch seams as per Megan's logical paranoia. Very well-founded. Paranoia in a good way. The kind we need. <laughs> Good thing I got all my edges pretty close there because I'm going to need them to be pretty close, you know. Ooh, Megan. Patchwork. Patchwork for sure. My, uh, the, the group I've been going to is called Mostly Modern, like quilt group, you know. It's like, it's mostly modern stuff. And we, one of the little exercises we did recently was called Vortex Quilt. And it was based on this gal using all of her scraps. Um, and it turned out really great. So it's scrappy, but there's also, um, you know, it's not hard to do. Like, I feel like scrappy stuff can be almost more work, you know. So what we did was they, people brought in like a bunch of little pieces, two pieces sewn together in different sizes. And then we all went around, they were all over the table, and we went around picking them up, and we put them in a little block, we each made a block. And so, you know, then we brought our blocks on Monday, and then we arranged the blocks, and now we're gonna sew all the blocks together. And it looks really cool together, and I think what, what's great is that when you do it from scraps, there are some unifying fabrics, you know, because you're, you're using from the same scraps, but at the same time, it's still scrappy, and they're all different sizes and stuff, and you can like, Sew them together, then cut it, and then push piece together. This is all stuff you know, but you know, I'm getting used to. It turned out really cool, and it looked didn't look yard sale scrappy. You know, it looked good. And I think flannels that's even more unifying. You know. I think I'm gonna keep mine in a way simple as far as the planning. The next thing I do, and just. That book I got that I really, that I did the coffee machine cover from. I'm going to do, I think, like a, a, like a miniature version or just like one block of her, every block in that book. And then I'll, maybe I'll sew them together. But I'm going to do it in the same fabrics. Just as like a way to do something. And if I don't sew them all together, they'll just be individual wall hangings. And they'll all look different, you know. That's my plan. I just need something new, fun, different, and di a diversion to sew. All right, 
new seam allowance here. Doing the quarter inch seam. So I just need to make sure when I do my underarm seam and my sleeve, I do the same thing. And now we're back on track. And I just sewed my vents shut. I just sewed my vents shut. I want the vent. This is not a subversive way to get rid of it. Did I sew them both shut? All right, I, I may not even get to this part today, so I have time, I can take these off, out, off camera. I just wanna to remember to do it, so. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm really liking the patterns from that book because they're so planned but still scrappy looking, you know? So it's not so traditional which I like the traditional stuff. I have this Amish quilt book I've been kind of obsessing over just because it's so interesting and all the stories behind it are so interesting for me. You know, it's kind of like a, a history thing plus um, the quilting thing. Oh, geez, did I just cut my seam allowance there? What, what am I doing here? Here we go. I'm removing this wrong thing. Okay, so we're gonna just pull this out a little bit. like this to the notch. All right, the back stitch right there. And then this will be ready. I have a lot of threads to remove though. <laughs> okay. Yeah, right, Daphne? And you know what? That's the thing is like, I feel like you have to fix it right then. There's a time where you just like, I need a break, you know? But mo for the most part, I think it's really good to just deal with it right then. Okay, so now we have our outer and our inner. Let's look at our sleeve. Let's look at this sleeve. So my idea I'm gonna clean finish this placket. I think I can do that. <laughs> oh, really, Megan? That, I love that. Like, I love this flannel right here. <clears throat> oh, that's awesome, Eliza. Yeah, I'm starting to get into it, you know? <laughs> okay, is my camera a little crooked here? All right, so let's see. I can leave that edge raw. I can leave my cuff raw. I just need to clean finish here and my underarm. So if I do this first, will that leave me enough room to do my underarm? No, I need to do the underarm first. All right, so let's do the underarm to itself, quarter inch seam. I feel like this is going together really easy and, and quick. <laughs> I don't know if it feels that way to you guys, but it does to me. One. Do you see I forgot to put my little teaser Instagram picture for today? I did it like 10 minutes before. <clears throat> I need to post more pictures on Instagram. It's like all these, all these just like graphics. They're so ugly. Yeah, right, Malin? That's uh, when I became more of a knitter, too. When my daughter was born. I had learned to knit, like, probably the year before I got pregnant. I 
And then all then also like the knitting changes focus too, you know. All right, so I want to make sure I stay I get a left and a right, so I fold these opposite of each other right off the bat. <laughs> We don't need two right sleeves to deal with. We have four sleeves in this, this garment. Four. Let's make it easy. One and two. Yeah, exactly. Unless it's a complicated pattern or something like that. But there's, there's lessons with that too, right? You, you get good at knowing how to leave your project so you can pick it back up. Okay, so now we have, so this one is a front. I always look for that single notch for the front but I always make sure the other one ha actually has two notches because you know how you'll go and do the double notch but only one notch really gets showing, you know? Yeah, Malin, exactly. So this is the front and then this one should be the front as well, right? And so that means I want the opposite here. I think like that and like this. I'm just thinking logically. I'm hoping that's the case. So. I'm going to turn this right side out. What, what is this? Oh, did I run out of bobbin earlier than I thought? Oh, I did. That's funny. It looked like it, had, it ran out right when I started that seam. This is exactly how a second would happen in chicken boots. <clears throat> you wouldn't realize you ran out of thread in a spot especially when it was um, black thread to something because the black is so hard to see. And we wouldn't realize that the, you know, say you're sewing this, a strap to a bag and you sew a little square around the end of that, like webbing onto the bag. And say you get two, two sides down, you run out of thread, you go to the other strap, you go to sew and, you're, and it sews a few stitches because it picks up that last little tail. And then it, um, you're, you switch your bobbin there, but you go, don't go back and look at the other strap. So. <laughs> Do I knit German or English? Are you asking me? I hold the yarn in my left hand. Where's <laughs> the... Left-handed, yeah, it's funny. Yeah, left-handed uh, knitting is definitely different. Okay, so if I put this in here, right sides together, that is my front, great. So I'm gonna put this in here and I'm gonna sew around my placket. I've never done this before, so let's hope, right? Actually, I'm not even gonna put it in there. I'm just gonna do it. You know, but I kind of want to sew my underarm seam down. I kind of want to sew my underarm seam down. Yeah. Yeah. Let's actually press that and, and do that. <laughs> I'm right handed, but I knit with, I put my yarn in my left hand. Which doesn't mean I'm left-handed or right-handed. It just is the way I knit. And I can never remember which one's called what. A friend of mine's learning to knit right now. And so I just said, just you know, I didn't teach her. I was just like, I hold it with my left hand. I don't know what it's called, but I started learning the other way. And then I got, I wanted to knit some socks and I got yarn that had elastic in it. Cause I was a noob and I didn't really know, you know, what I was doing and what I was buying. And I was away from my friend who taught me. So, um, when I went to go and knit it, it was so hard to keep my gauge and tension correct. I, <laughs> I started holding the yarn in my left hand, not knowing people do that. Because I, I was just trying to hold the tension of the yarn really well. And um, 
make sure that my gauge, my gauge was still really terrible in those socks, but um, I was trying. And uh, that's why I did that. And then I was like, this is kind of easier and faster, you know, like I've knit the entire pair of socks, so I got really good at it. And so I just started doing that. And when I got home and saw my friend that taught me, she was actually really upset with me. <laughs> She's like, why did you just, why did you start knitting? And she called it whatever that is. And um, I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I had no idea what she was talking about. And then she said, you're holding the yarn differently. And I was like, oh, it's just because of this. And the reason for her being so upset was because she was in a knitting group. And the knitting group was um, all women that were very, very experienced. And some of them were very strict and a little bit judgy. And they didn't like that she didn't knit that way. She held the yarn with her right hand. She liked it. And they were like, yeah, but it's faster the other way. And she was like, I'm really fast this way. And she was being a little bit stubborn about it just because of the way they approached her with it. You know, they weren't very, they weren't particularly, you know, <laughs> nurturing. And, um, and then a few years, I don't know, maybe not a few years yet. I don't know, maybe it was only a year. I don't know how much later. She, she started doing it and she told me and she goes, you know, I just decided that if I'm fast the other way, I could be even faster this way. And so she switched. When I do color work, I hold one in each hand. All right, I'm just going to press these. Yeah, there are, and um, I don't know. I feel like, is it really a left-handed or right-handed thing? Because holding the yarn in my left hand felt really uncomfortable, and it definitely hurt my, oh, sorry, it hurt my brain a little bit. Um, But I got the hang of it, so I feel like it doesn't, I don't know. I don't, I've thought about this a lot and I'm not sure why it's a left or right-handed thing. Yeah, I know. Right. I don't know if they were old, but they were definitely, that's where, um, I learned the term coffin sweater. She learned it from one of those women in the group because she, she, one, someone came in one day and showing off her new sweater or whatever. And she's like, I know it's a coffin sweater. You know, like she didn't want to get teased for it. And that's where Sunny, my friend, first heard the term. And which means like it, there's only detail and interest on the front, like as if you're laying in a coffin. So <laughs> yeah, you, I use both hands for Pharaoh, exactly. Yeah, that's what I think, Melinda, too. I totally don't think it's left or right-handed. I think you just have to deal with it. Because it's not, like, holding the yarn in my left hand does not feel right-handed to me or left-handed. I know, right? Sydney, isn't that funny? <laughs> she thought it was really funny, too. <laughs> I've never forgotten that because sometimes I bring it up here. I'm all, this pattern is a, is, it's, it just reminds me of that. Like, I feel like there's a lot of patterns with a lot of interest on the front and they don't pay attention to the back, you know? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's nice when you look good from the front, but I want to look good from the back too. <laughs> so I'm just stitching down my underarm seams. I actually don't really care which direction they're, they're pointing, um, but I should. Yeah, I did press these, the thicker ones, the opposite way. Mainly because when I get to the underarm seam, I was planning on splitting the seam one way going, the lining going one way and the outer going the other way. So it's not really going to matter. I, I do care, but I don't care in the uh, way that usually we do. It's just more that I want them to be opposite to decrease the bulk. That's all I'm trying to do. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's not that I don't, I don't really want like attention. I just want to look good, you know, like I want, like, I feel like when there's no attention paid to the pattern, the backside's all frumpy. 
And if and then you do look at it, you notice that, you know, like if there was some attention and some shaping going on, it would just look natural and normal, you know. So Ah, interesting, Sydney. That's funny. Did that work? Yeah, well, that's the thing is like, I feel like, yeah, so you're the chart knitting, all the pattern reading, you, you should just learn to knit one of the ways that speaks to you, the, the like left or the right hand, like holding the yarn in your left or your right hand, whatever feels good to you. Because patterns are all written a certain way because knitting goes from left to right, right to left, sorry. You know, so uh, you, you have to follow those. It's not like they're right or left-handed. It's just how knitting is. We le read left to right. Left-handed people wish we wrote right to left. So in a way, knitting is left-handed. Yeah, right, Sydney, exactly. Okay, so let's do these plackets because I'm kind of curious about this. I, I very carefully laid out my sleeves and now they're all higgledy piggledy. So let's see here. I have my double notch there. So that means this one should have a single notch and it does. So these go together, <clears throat> but I'm going to double check. <laughs> so this is right side out. You want fun socks? Yeah, it's awesome. There's my underarm seam right there. So yep, this is it. I'm just gonna pull this up like this. <laughs> Sew this. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna start at the bottom at a quarter inch and I'm gonna go to nothing at the point, just kind of like you do with your bias. So I need these slits. I should have checked to see if my slits were the same because I, I was actually, I know they were a little different. If they're not, it's okay. I'll just sew it and then trim it to be the same. So let's see here. I'm going to start at a quarter inch and then my flannel is deeper. So I'm kind of just like angling my needle to a point that's about, you know, like right here. Like I'm trying to look straight up from the pivot so about right here just about right here about right here okay make sure I don't get anything else in there it feels a little lumpy in there all right I'm gonna pivot and then head straight down All right, so I barely caught it on this side, right? It's right there. So I'm probably gonna make this a little better. I don't want it to like come apart there, you know? So we'll just make it a little bit wider. So I may have to make it a little bit taller probably. There we go, that works. And now I just need to slit to that pivot point up there. Yeah, I totally agree. Like learning a scarf is <laughs> what I told my friend was, you know, I think learning on a scarf is just like the traditional way to learn how to knit because it, it, it's a really great project for that. But don't feel like you have to finish it. <laughs> I told her, I was like, once you get about this much and your sides are now the same, like, cause it's gonna go like this. And once they start getting the same, and you're, if you get bored, switch, you know, ask for a different project. <laughs> so I told her, she was like, okay. All right, so here's my placket there. I haven't pressed it yet. A little bit of, of the stitching showing there.
All of a sudden, that fabric looked like more creamy on this side. I was like, is there really a right side? Let's turn it. Let's turn it out. Turn it right side out or inside out again. The most complicated way. All right. So we have our top here. This top edge is going to be a flat felled seam. But I want to make sure that everything in there is nice and flat. Like I don't want to get any like pulling, you know. And then I'll treat this as one edge because the cuff's going to clean finish it. I think this is going to work. I think this is going to work. Exactly, Malin. Washcloths are great. Yeah. And I think socks are a really great beginning project. They don't have to be your first project. But I think that they're a really great, like, pretty early on project. The flannel gets a little stretched out there. You see that? So the one thing, the one drawback about this kind of placket, like clean finishing it, is that when I go to button it, it's going to do that. You know, whereas when you have binding, you end up turning under the top one like this, and it goes like that. It's kind of similar. It's not much different, honestly. All right, I'm going to sew this one, and then we're going to press the heck out of them. <laughs> I think a kitty size blanket's great. What I did <laughs> when um, I started doing getting into sweaters was I, um, after a few, and I started getting better, and then I kind of revisited some of those old sweaters, and I stopped wanting to wear them, and I realized, like, yeah, these just aren't that great. I turned those into kitty blankets. <laughs> I just got the sleeves off. Got rid of a zipper here, sewed the front shut, sewed the bottom shut, the neck shut, and I just made them like, just like this part of the garment. And then I threw it through the washing machine and dryer and felted them and they became kitty blankets. Do a loop, well, I don't think I need to. I feel like it, that that is the way the placket is usually. You know, it's just usually like this is the only difference. Right? So this is how mine's going to look once it's pressed, right? It'll be like that. Same kind of thing. A little different. Ooh, I love projects like this. I'm really excited. So I am probably going to re-record my Burnside Bibs video. I'm going to try and find a sponsor for it because I don't need another pair of Burnside bits. <laughs> but I am going to, I think I'm going to re-record that. I, I, I like that project and I don't feel like my video does it justice because I modified it a little too. You made a lot of dog blanks. <laughs> yeah, right, Malin? Exactly. My arm will smooth it all out. All right. Let's get that right on top of itself. pivot point a lot better sewing it from the flannel side and get right up in there I don't think I cut the other one as close like that and now we're going to iron them Okay. All right. Iron time. Hello, Hut Armories. How's it going? What you up to today? Oops, I'm going to slide my screen. It might make my keyboard crash down. Just so I can see chat <laughs> a little bit. Most of the folks are chatting over on YouTube, but I can see Twitch chat today. 
It wasn't looking, um, Twitch crashed or something the other day. It was kind of weird. All right, so let's just smooth out this placket here. I'm making a reversible button down shirt, so we're kind of beating this shirt into a different kind of shape in a way. Adding some technical sewing things for fun. So the other thing about making the placket like this is see now there's a gap as well. There is the other way. It's just that the binding I feel like um, fills it in a little bit. It's actually kind of a pleasing <laughs> shape. All right, here's the other one. This one, maybe I need to get in there and cut better. Let's see if the iron helps. A little bit. There we go. I need more water in my iron. All right, so now we have the sleeve. Um, it'll be reversible. We're gonna line up all these edges here. I'll do it right here now that I'm standing here. It looks like, like I'm trying to get it nice and flat in there so I don't get any torquing because I really hate the torquing. And it does look like my lining might be a little shy right here, so let's see how it looks up here. I mean, if I line it up, we'll see what happens. I don't like this little pucker here. I, mean, I think when it's washed, it will calm down. And like you say, when my arm's in there, it'll be fine. But you know, it would be nice. All right, so this feels pretty flat in all respects. See, there is a little water in here. So I'll just respect the fact that um, it's a little shy right here. All right, let's look at this one. Line all these up. The, the outer flannel is so much more forgiving and stretchy. So I gotta be careful. It's kind of like a knit, you know? It's like putting a knit with a woven in a way. I don't really want to get any uh, weirdness. Okay. Let's try that. What's this wrinkle? Where's this wrinkle right here? I've just been lining it up at the top edge and then shaking it out and seeing what happens. It's already fixed right here, so I can't, I don't have too much um, flexibility, but it, it feels really good. Like for the most part, it's feeling really good. Why couldn't that little slub on my yoke not be right in the center of the yoke, you know, like this one is. All right, this looks pretty good. I see that little wrinkle there. I'm paying attention to it. Let's just iron this all, make sure I don't have any weirdness. Okay. That is gonna be cozy, I agree. All right, so um, I think, I think, I wanna see about the length a little bit. Cause I could just do the cuff right now, you know? 
And then the sleeves are done, and then they go to the garment. And then we're there. We're almost to that. Yeah, I think this will be good. I think they're going to be a little long, and that's actually good. I kind of want them, the cuff to be longer than what I have right now. So here's my cuffs. What time is it? Oh, okay. I'm actually about to stop soon. So maybe I won't do that right now. I'm going to put my pleats in. Wait, get that in there. Get in there. Meg, should I top stitch my, I'm not gonna, I don't wanna top stitch my placket, but should I? Yeah, Megan, we're gonna do a few. <laughs> you like the tuck cuff stuff, Praetorian? We can do the cuff, that's fine. I like sewing cuffs. Sorry I'm not sewing this placket in the traditional way with the bias binding, but I've done that a few times. You can look it up in another video. I wanna make sure my lining's not gonna poke out. Do I wanna top stitch this? I kind of, maybe I do. Kind of go, keep going with this structured look since I've been top stitching um, all my seams. So let's, I just feel like I'm gonna have to turn this inside out or, I mean, it's reversible, so. But I wanna stitch on the flannel side. It'll be easier to do it from the inside because I don't have a free arm on my machine. And this way I can keep this lining on the inside I really just want it on the edge, right? Because it's not aligning. It's actually reversible. I want it right on the edge so from this side it looks good and this side it looks good. I don't really want to do... Usually what I would do if I was trying to hide something is I'd make sure this kind of went a little bit in there, but from this side you'd see a little bit of that flannel, right? So let's just keep that right on the edge. And we'll stitch it down and let it know that that's its new life form. All right, so I'm just gonna go around this angle here. Yeah, I think that was a good call. Phew. <laughs> All right, so let's turn this one and do the same thing. See, look, I ironed that like as if it's a lining, which isn't what I'm going for. I am making this so that it's the same either side. It's a good reminder. So I don't think, I was thinking like, you know, usually we do a part one, part two, and I was like, oh, this one's going to be a little longer. Maybe we'll do a part three, because we really did a lot with the fitting um, of the of this, because I really changed the fit a little bit. And the style, that's pretty good. But I think, actually, this is going a lot faster than I thought it would, um, and... I don't know, I may need a new garment by Thursday. <laughs> All right, so I did do the squared um, cuff version. So this pattern usually has like a, they have a, a rounded cuff version right here. Mine are, my cuffs are turning a little blue because of all the denim I wear. <laughs> um, the little edges here. So usually the archer has this like, curved cuff and they're they're really wide um, and the sleeves are pretty voluminous. Um, I kind of tear, she kind of tapered that all down a little bit. And then I'm making this reversible so I do have a different fabric as the lining and as the outer. So I'm just gonna sew around the three sides of my cuff here at a half inch seam. Do 
Two shirts in one, so a little more videos, right? Exactly. Um, I'm gonna cut my corners. I actually trim it a little bit too. More and more, I'm kind of tapering a little bit the seam allowance here and here because the way I look at it is all this fabric when I turn the cuff inside is going like this, right? This is how it's going to sit. So getting rid of some of this even beyond the just clipping the corner, I think it makes it a little easier to kind of lay inside there nicely, you know? It's just my theory, my current th theory. I'm a little shy about trimming that one because I got one stitch too long. Did you see me? And I went back. So I'm going to reinforce this corner. You know, when you cut those, clip those corners, and then when you go to turn them and they start like unraveling. Yeah. I don't like that either. All right. So how did I sew this cuff? I think I sewed it so. Yeah, I did. The print's directional, so I'm just trying to pay attention to that. So let's see. It would be like that. I kind of did nothing just now. I just was trying to make it less confusing for myself. There's a little slit in my fabric here. It's not a notch. It's just um, accidental when I was cutting it out. So I feel like with cuffs, as in with jeans waistbands, one of my things that I always kind of fall short of is making sure my cuff is the same on left and right. I do this with my waistbands too. You've heard me kind of lament over this. Um, I get so focused on it matching up this way. So here's my waistband and I want my fly, you know, to line up right here on the waist seam that I forget about the height of the waistband. And I do the same thing with cuffs. It's just one of my things. So I'm gonna kind of check it out right now and see how they're doing before I turn them. And this one is a little bit higher right here. So I'm just gonna take it down a skosh. That. Let's check this one. Since I didn't remember to, see, I was already getting into a pickle. Let's see here. Yeah, that's that one's pretty good. So I lucked out on that one. You'll notice there's no interfacing. I usually at least put a fabric if I don't use interfacing. I'm just not on this because my flannel is actually really, really thick. That's the only reason I'm not right now. Oh, thanks for subscribing, Sylvain. <laughs> Sylvianne. All right, so I'm gonna turn my points here. And I gotta remind myself that I want the fabric to be the same on either side. And then once I press these um, and sew my pleats, I'll put the cuffs on. And then I'll call it a day. That, does that sound fair enough? That'll be a good stopping point. That really gives me something to look forward to because I'm really excited about attaching the sleeves in the flat feld with the flat feld seam. I've been getting kind of into those flat feld seams. All right, I'm gonna iron this real quick. Hopefully my iron's still kind of hot too. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> When it's these little narrow seams, sometimes what I like to do is um, just iron the seam kind of right here. Just with the seam allowance to one side, it doesn't matter what side. It just, I don't know why, but I find, I found this when I was doing French seams a lot that now I'm trying to do it with everything that I'm turning like this. So I press the seam one way and then when I go to press it flat, it just wants to do it so much nicer. You know? Yeah, look at that. I feel actually kind of smart right now. What's going on here though? Did I just not sew that very straight? What is that? The flannel, like I say, it's, it's so gushy um, that it is a little bit open weave. I wanna make sure. 
I need more water in my iron. It would iron so much better. That was pretty good though. All right, so same thing. I just kind of, this has been working really good. Just get in there and press the seam one way or the other. Doesn't have to be perfect. It just helps. It's actually really satisfying too. Makes it go faster. I feel like this one I could get better. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, like that. Those, those cuff points look pretty good. I think the flannel is really forgiving. It's making it a little easier for them. Just looking at both sides, making sure there's nothing pulling from one side to the other. All right. Let's check them. Um, reality check. <laughs> okay. Ooh, I did pretty good. I'm happy. I'm happy. <laughs> it's okay, Stephanie. I'm here for a little bit more. <laughs> We're going to be doing um, a bit on the sleeves first. All right, so let's put the, let's just sew these pleats down now. And right now, actually, I'm going to check and make sure that these, see how these don't line up? I feel so smart for looking at this right now because this is exactly how my cuff would get crooked because I wasn't paying attention right there. So I need to kind of blend that in a little bit. Um, and I think this is the side with my, with my notches for the pleats. I'm gonna have to be careful I don't lose my notches. You know? Okay, so there's the notch right there. And here's a notch right there, okay. So this is the one area that it's not going to be perfectly um, reversible because, and I could if I want, but I have a I have some background. So when I do these pleats, right? So say I I favor the side with the um, flannel as my outer, right? And I put in my pleats, right? They're going to go like this. Where are my pleats? Did I have a third notch there? Wait a minute. I have this one and this one, and I have this one, but I think there's actually one right here that I um, need. Let's just check before I get too far. Yeah, I do. Okay, so it's like about three eighths of an inch away right about here. All right, so, so say I pleat these, right? So we do this, okay, and I pleat this like that. On the other side, the pleats are going the wrong way. It's not a big deal. You know, like you and I are going to know, but you guys aren't going to wrap me out to anybody, right? So it's not a big deal. It will look funny to someone if they're looking at it and they really know shirt making. I could, I could rectify this by separating these two layers out and then having these pleats you know, go towards the notch and these pleats go towards the notch. Now, the drawback to this, I'm gonna tell you this because I did this with the scout tee. Remember when I did the scout tee, I put a yoke here because the fabric was sheer. So I left the yoke sheer and then I lined the lower half, but it had that back pleat in the center. I could gather Malin. I'm just not a big fan of gathers. So, um, what I have found with that is it's so hard to frickin' iron that puppy because the pleats are going like this. They're like, that's a box pleat and it's hanging from the center back yoke. And so the, there's two box pleats right on top of each other like this. And so it's really hard to get those to lay flat. And I'm not sure if this would give me the same kind of trouble, but it is the one thing to think about, you know? I really truly want it to be reversible I would do the pleats like this it doesn't feel bulkier 
I actually don't think it's going to iron that badly. This fabric is unironed and so is this. So we kind of know how they're going to be. So maybe I do it. <laughs> it's a little fussier, but you know, it's only fussy for a second. Let's see here. It doesn't seem like it's really adding much bulk. I'm gonna have to do them separately like this though. All right, so this one goes here and then this one goes here. Phew. I don't like my pleats doing that little angle thing, so I try and I try and straighten them up like that so they look a little bit more perpendicular to the the seam line. I feel like that just comes with sewing a lot of these things and you notice it later on, you're like, huh, how <laughs> did I get that kind of wonky? You know? It's like the more you sew things, the more you start thinking ahead when you're at that point. So alright, so now my sleeve is proper and proper. Glad we talked about that. <laughs> or me. <laughs> Just do it. Exactly. <laughs> Just do it. All right. So we already started sewing this one. So let's pop this out real quick. And oh, let's check the um, placket here. The placket length. This one's not off as much. But we're going to trim it just like this. Get rid of all that terrible Sharpie ink I left on there that I'm ashamed of. All right, so. When my machine gets uh, impatient with me, it this, the presser foot slams down. That's what that is. Just in case you haven't heard my machine before. There's a little bit of threads sliding back onto the seam here. And I was trying to get rid of those because I those are a pet peeve of mine. All right. So same with this one. Let's get this here. All right. Do our cuff. Let's get rid of some of this uh, mess here, so it's easy to see. The quilting cotton surprisingly gets a little raggedy. I'm not surprised by the flannel yarn dye to do that. Okay. So um, I've sewn cuffs and collars on here a ton, and you guys know that usually if this was like there this wasn't reversible I would sew it favoring the outside so I would actually so let's pretend like the lining is lining right I would sew it from the lining side and then finish it on the right side which I know isn't traditional to do but that's how I do it and I'm gonna do it here too the flannel is gonna be harder because it's thicker so I'm going to make it easy on myself and I'm gonna line up these seams here they actually, this cuff actually might not line up perfectly because of the um, the way I sewed the placket. Because because um, if you recall, like when you do this placket, like with binding, like I said, you turn back the little edge right here, right? Right, you turn back that edge. So that little amount right there isn't um, included in the overall collar length or uh, cuff length. So I may get into a little bit of length difference. All right, so we're gonna line this up right on that edge there. I'm not even gonna check, I'm just gonna go for it. <laughs> And now I'm going to start kind of fiddling with it. I'm actually going to turn my 
cuff this way too. It'll be easier to sew. So let's just get this going and see where we're at. That looks pretty good. Awesome. Let's do it. My lining is a little shy compared to the outer and it kind of bugs me, but that's the way it wanted to lay and that's how we pressed it. Um, so I'm just gonna respect that. I just don't want any like, you know, different um, lengths on the inside compared to the outside. All right, so we have our cuff, we're gonna line up. So when you're lining up these edges here, like the edge of your cuff to the edge of your placket, take your time with that. Get it right on top of itself. If you have to pin it, pin it. Here, I'll pin it. But where's my pins? And, and because um, this is my little tip, when you're sewing something like this, my machine coming towards that edge might push the top layer past it a little bit. So I think sometimes it's good to do a little shy, but if you can really maintain all of your thicknesses and um, the tension of your feed dogs pulling your fabric and your presser foot touching the top, then you can just pin it right on top of itself and just be careful, just make sure. That is a non-negotiable spot, so don't let it ooch past there. But that's what I have found that sometimes, especially if it's really thick, like if you're doing something much thicker, if I had interfacing in here, if this was the both sides of the cuff were flannel and there was interfacing in there, it'd be a little bit of a challenge. So then you, you really wanna make sure that you're not letting things slide. The pleats are a little funny right here because they're all going different ways from each other. So I'm just trying to get them nice and flat and keep the pleats going straight up. And then also all my th threads, keeping them at bay. And when I get to my cuff, I try and straighten out this other side of the cuff so that it's nice and straight like this. That helps. <clears throat> and also remember, that you want your seam allowance here to be exactly where it is here so that your cuffs stay the same width and mine's a little narrower here so let's just fix this right now and i feel like i didn't even start this very well you can see it's pushed away from that edge a little bit so let's just line that up a little better i'll use my awl it doesn't even look kind of like a right angle there all right so now we have our cuff on here just like this. So this is this side. So see right there my my fabric is peeking out. I tried. Don't let it negotiate exactly. <laughs> it's my shirt. You're doing what I want. I mean you're basically telling this fabric that's lived a nice flat life that all of a sudden you're going to be a three-dimensional object and you want it to be a certain way. All right, so to not get your two layers of your cuff, like like you don't want this one to be sewn up here and you have this extra bagginess compared to the other side, you can do this. You can just kind of pin your cuff along the center and get it nice and flat. That way, it kind of just takes that little bit out that you're having to figure out, is it flat or not, is it flat or not, you know? And now, I like to give my cuff a nice tug and now we're gonna top stitch it down and let's pin this the sleeves a little heavy so let's just do it like this nice and flat nice and flat everybody's nice and flat put our little fold and I, I like doing this this way too also so I don't get this sliding this way or this way right so this is the right side of my garment like we're pretending like this is the right side of my garment so this is how I would normally sew a cuff I would finish on the right side that way I can see exactly what's going on and I can make sure it's all gonna look really good you don't really care if you get off of the cuff on the inside as much as you do how it looks on the outside right and I've really waffled back and forth with how to sew cuffs like do I turn back this edge or do I not? Um, do you leave this edge unsewn or do you not? 
there's <clears throat> there's pluses and minuses to each way and I've changed over the years a few ways a few different ways of how I sew it <clears throat> so maybe it's the fabric maybe it's my mood maybe it's what I'm better at in the moment because sometimes I feel like <laughs> you know I'll lose the skill to do something occasionally so it happens right and then I have to kind of get it back. All right. I don't really need this pin, but we'll just put it in there so, since it was hanging out there. And let's just see how this looks. Get all those threads in there. So I just take that fold and I put it just past where I just stitched. All right, and so um, I always start and stop my stitching in the middle of the cuff. That way I'm not starting right here at the edge. I don't like starting at the edge because it puts that ball of thread there. And also um, the other thing is when I'm, see how this is already kind of creeping this way? That's a, kind of annoying to me. I'm gonna pull the heck out of this right now. I'm just gonna do this like this. And see now I have this little bubble, but we're gonna, we're gonna, ease that in there it's gonna be just fine and then when I'm coming to this point this is another thing try and pull this a little bit extra that way towards the cuff like this because this is exactly that spot where I'm telling you my machine's gonna be pushing this top layer this top layer is loose right it's not fixed like this under layer is already fixed this top layer is gonna get pushed a little bit and it's so easy for it to get pushed and kind of roll off the edge and then not be lined up so annoying you've put all this effort under the cuff into the cuff and because my fat my fabrics are all different right now and i'm kind of worried about this whole reversible thing that, you know kind of want to get it spot on but we're going to do our best all right i'm just going to stitch it down now it's like every job right it's all the work is in the prep and then the cleanup you know you're painting a room it's all in the prep you set it up it's easy it turns out great the same with the sewing I'm really close to the edge there, a little closer than I wish I was. <laughs> Sometimes your stitches are just not the right length for the length you're sewing. See, that way my back tack is, you know, on the underarm. It's actually, technically that's not the underarm. You could do it right on the underarm seam and then it would be on the underarm. I had to take that pin out because it was in the way. So now I'm going to look at this. I'm going to pull it over a little bit. Make sure. Stand right on that edge. And I'm just going to take these pins out because I feel like it'll be easier actually now because I've got everything is secured, right? So now I just need to keep this nice and straight and everything in there. And we're hoping this time though that my stitching does look good on the other side since it's technically reversible. <laughs> so here we go, let's look. Okay, not bad, not bad. But look, I'm off right there. And see if this were a non-reversible shirt, you wouldn't really care because you're not gonna ever see that side, right? So, but it really gets lost in the stitching of this really busy print. And here is my cuff. And then when it's buttoned, it'll be like that, minus all of the thread. Well, probably not minus the thread since that is just part of my life. But that is one of the nicer cuffs I've sewn in a while. This flannel is really easy to deal with and it's nice. It's pretty much the same on either side and they line up here. You know, let's do it again. <laughs> one more time. <laughs> all right, so I like to start from the inside. I am kind of turning my cuff like inside out to do this so I can get it really flat right here at that juncture. Just found it helps. I like my right angles. They make all the difference. All right. Okay. 
get those pleats straight up and down. I, hopefully the ones on the underside are straight up and down. I didn't actually check that on that cuff that we just sewed. All right, so I'm getting close to the end here. I better make sure I'm not gonna run out. Oh, it's getting close. Good thing I checked. All right, there's that edge right there. If I stay at my half inch seam allowance, then theoretically, right, it'll all match on the other side. <laughs> theoretically, right? Right, right, exactly. I know, it's like such a small little thing to sew in size, but um, so many little things, I don't know, I just kind of slack on some of the things with the cuff and um, I always regret it because even though it's not something I look at a whole lot, like this cuff actually, I actually, when I finished this shirt on stream, I decided that I wanted to shorten the sleeves quite a bit. And um, I did, and I didn't, I did a good job with like the length, but when I put the cuffs back on, I, I had a little extra. And I, I didn't have it in me by then to like fix it. <laughs> so they are a little off at the edge there. And it doesn't matter too much since it goes underneath but I know it's there, you know? They were beautiful when I finished and then I poked the bear and pulled it all apart, you know? All right, so let's turn this under. Let's look at this here. I like to give it a good tug too. All right, so let's, let's just like pin a little bit of this fabric down so we know that this is nice and flat for at least that first inch, inch and a quarter right here, keep it nice and straight, you know? We'll start in the center. But once you do all this prep, like the sewing part ends up being kind of easy, right? You see, I always open this up to turn it because if I don't, I get a little buckle right there and I can't quite get over this thing here. And I think I'm gonna trim this down actually. This is always dangerous because what if you need to get back in there and you needed that, but this way it's not bu bumping up against this edge here. You can just shove it in there like that. It's always good to think, where is that fabric on the inside gonna end up in there? And kind of preparing the spot that it's going to be. That's kind of how I look at things like this. I think sewing binding all those years um, really taught me to think about where in relation my needle is to the inside and the outside, right? And then that started making me think about, well, the fabric, the fabric has to go somewhere, right? It doesn't, doesn't just disappear but just because it's on the inside. And so I think about that now, especially with corners and stuff like that. And I can definitely do better because I definitely will cut corners sometimes, you know? This isn't very good right here. I may have to fix that. We've come this far, baby. Right, let's fix that. Cause see, look at that. Yeah. I feel like Sheldon Cooper. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, I can't do that. <laughs> Only because I've already put enough time and effort into trying to get it nice. But do you ever feel like you get really close and then you're like, ooh, I could get it even better. And then you just make it worse. I think you're about to watch that happen right now. So. so let's see here. Let's get rid of some of these threads. Sometimes when I have this issue, what I do is then I start from the end, the offending end. I actually started from this end, didn't I? So it's kind of a wonder that it did that. I thought that was the end when I was trying to make it work. All right, so let's get that right on there. I'll pin it, just so you're not like, pin it! <laughs> I picture you guys shouting at me. Why are you making it hard on yourself? I promise, pinning is great. I just don't use it because sometimes it's not for me. I, my machine is like a, a, a helping hand, like because I can, 
have, my hands are free not to deal with the presser foot. It helps. All right, so let's get this back on track. All right, there we go. That's better. Let's get rid of that thread though. All right, um, I might adjust this right now or in a minute. I have to look at all this here. Home stretch, guys. Try and get that nice and straight. There we go. I was like pinning into the fold, but honestly, I like the pins going this way when I'm at the machine. So it's kind of funny I do that to myself because you saw me switch them last time, didn't you? So. <laughs> right, Rachel? <laughs> exactly. Right, Sydney? Yeah. I know. It's funny because I think about that, like how much of us, how many of us actually sew really late at night you know, when maybe it's after a glass of wine, maybe it's after a rough day with work, kids, family, whatever. And then you're like, I'm going to relax and sew. And then you're not feeling that way at all. And then you're getting tired, but you're like, I don't want to go to bed. This is my only free time. I really want to do this. So I just unpinned that and I probably shouldn't have. So I'm just going to use my all to kind of push this towards the presser foot. I know it's picking up, but that's okay. It's going to all even out. But the worst is when you're sitting there at 11 o'clock at night in front of your sewing machine and you are either crying because it's something that has to be done by tomorrow because it's like, you know, someone's birthday, whatever, wedding, whatever, you know, or um, you're just really frustrated. <laughs> you know, it's like, that's the worst. That's so the worst. You do need to know when to stop. It's so true. Even just walking out of the room, going and getting a glass of water and coming back um, can make a big difference. My sewing got better when I did that. <laughs> All right, so I'm just pulling this, cover my stitches there to make sure that it's going to get on there, lady. Okay, there we go. So the pleats all being folded the same direction, I can feel a little bit extra thickness there, but it doesn't, it's not bad. It's not like the scout tee is. The scout tee is a little funky. Scout tee, also a grain line studio pattern. <laughs> I feel like I've sewn almost everything they make now. All right. This one, I stayed on the cuff better on the inside. Yeah, there's a little spot right there. But not bad, not bad. Let's see um, when it's buttoned, how it looks, you know? Oh no, Ray. Exactly. Yep, unsleeved and hidden in the back of the closet, exactly. Oh no, Rachel, I'm so sorry to hear that. <laughs> Running out of fabric is the worst. Okay, so let's see here. Wait, it goes this way. I yeah, like this. I, I have to admit, I'm actually quite pleased with how this looks, so. That's not always common. This feels kind of thick in here, and I think it's because of these pleats. Um, I don't regret not doing the interfacing. I'm really glad about that. Uh, but I feel like uh, interfacing, maybe on this piece, would help kind of... Uh, I don't know, even out the thickness of all these cut pleats. I don't really know how, why I think that, but I think that that would actually help. Or maybe even interfacing the cuff only from the seam allowance down. No one ever does that, but I feel like that actually could help, especially if you didn't put it in the seam allowance here. You know, it would even out this thickness. But that looks pretty snazzy. All right, so on Wednesday, we're going to sew these onto the shirt with a flat felled seam. Um, that's different than the French seam. The French seam is the one that you sew wrong sides together, iron it, press it, um, 
turn it and then sew it right sides together, you know, and then you completely enclose the raw edge. Flat felled is different. I like to think of it as more like you sew it still right sides together. You can also sew it wrong sides together. Depends on which way you want your flat filled seam to go. Classically, I feel like it's wrong sides together. And then you hem one edge over the other. So you trim the under edge to like the, the width that's gonna finish and then you hem the other edge over it. So like the end seam on almost all ready to wear jeans, that's all flat filled, so. <laughs> You're in therapy. <laughs> It's an emotional high, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Did you guys see, someone posted something on Instagram today where they really reworked a dress big time, you know? Yep, <laughs> our clothes need to come out of the closet. <laughs> they're all hiding in there because they're not ready yet. All right, so here's the lining or the inside of the jacket. And then here is our outer jacket with the, it's not a jacket, overshirt. We have these little pockets. We're gonna have the vent. We're gonna clean finish the hem. Even the placket's going to be reversible because we're gonna do um, something really similar to the, what we did here, which is pretty non-traditional. I'm gonna put some interfacing in the front edge there though, really to give it some oomph and thickness there. I kind of want it to still look like a placket, you know? So that's my plan. This shirt's going really well. I'm pretty happy with it and it's the based on the uh, Grain Line Studio Archer button up. Um, you could do this whole thing with a men's version as well, like the Fairfield button up from Thread Theory Designs, uh, if anyone's looking for that kind of option. I've made that Fairfield a few times, it's great, so. All right, guys, that was fun. It's so nice to sew again, you guys, with you guys. I mean, I know it's only been like a couple weeks, but it's weird taking a week off. I don't do that very often. I didn't actually not work. I just didn't stream, so yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I probably need to come up with, I might be able to stretch this Wednesday and Thursday. So once we put the sleeves on, all I'll have left is the hem and the collar. So this is getting finished on Wednesday. That's all no problem for me. The, the collar is gonna be sewn like we did the cuffs, right? We're gonna do from one side to the other. Um, those are reversible as well. I can't believe how fast this went. Yeah, cool. Maybe I'll do a Fairfield button up soon for my husband. I, he needs another shirt, I think, so. Cool, all right, well, I hope you guys, yeah, have a great weekend. Thanks for coming. And um, if you're new here, you know, follow along. Um, the streams are pretty much free. If you wanna support me, I'm on Patreon. And that's all linked in the YouTube description. My website is soso.live and pretty much all the website is used for is a way to catalog all of our projects because YouTube's so difficult to navigate. I link or I group all the videos for a project in one heading. So it, it's easy to find like the cutting, the sewing part one, the sewing part two and see them in order. So if you're interested in that, we've sewn a lot on here. And um, we're continuing on, so thanks, you guys. Hey, Andy, how's it going? Ta-ta for now. <laughs> Love it. Andy, did I? I feel like you asked me something and I came up with an answer about it. Andy, you weren't the one looking for a circle skirt. I know. I've already been down this road, right? Andy already told me he's he or she isn't. Who was it? Anyway. All right, you guys. Um... Oh, what a pretty heart. <laughs> I love that. All right. Thanks, you guys. Have a fantastic weekend. I will see you on Wednesday. And I um, can't wait. See ya. Bye.